This is Dr. Ravi Godse and I'm talking about boosters. If you're watching this in India, no need to watch this any further. India doesn't need the boosters right now. Just, just don't worry about it. Just move on. You can stop watching here. But if you want to see some fascinating thinking and a conspiracy theory of my own, please, please follow along. So I had said before that if you want to improve the health of politics, you have to remove the politics from health. But today I'm going to talk a little bit about politics with one conspiracy theory. I mean, what the heck? If politicians can Google COVID and come on talk shows, why can't I Google politics and talk about it? And these days with the booster, it's like we don't know whether we are following science or what are we doing. It's just like the revolving door. So we don't know whether the science is following the politicians or the politicians are following the science. It's all jumbled up. The, the ship is sailed on boosters in the sense that if like a, a moderately clever student joins a coaching class, even the clever student is going to feel that he or she is missing out on something. So there's going to be a stampede now and at risk means everybody is going to qualify. The people who have taken the vaccine are very interested in the boosters. And keep giving boosters to this population is not going to move the needle much. We have to focus on the people who haven't been vaccinated yet. And that's the challenge. And that needs to be done with common sense, empathy and tact. That should rule out mostly what we have here. I mean, what are we going to do? But there is one hidden potential benefit that nobody is talking about. That the person who has taken two doses of the vaccine should have decent protection. Why decent? Very good protection against serious disease and death. death. But they can still catch it and they can still spread it. That's the problem. With the booster, it is possible that they will even stop spreading it and in a way they will be helping the unvaccinated people because they just refuse to take the vaccine. We can save all these unvaccinated people by using monoclonal antibodies and we can finish the pandemic all over the world. Whoever are high risk, forget high risk, anybody who tests positive for COVID, if we can give them monoclonal and keep them out of the hospital, that's it. It has become endemic everywhere. So what is my conspiracy theory? What might have happened? I think it's about economy. Is the economy stupid? Unless the parents return to work, the economy won't bounce back. There are a lot of single parents and there are a lot of younger kids. If the kids stay at home, the parents cannot return to work. And unless the teachers are given the booster, the teachers will not allow the schools to stay open. That's just my conspiracy theory. I hope I am wrong. And so they had to give it to the teachers. So now they have included the doctors, though the CDC committee was against it. There's some logic behind giving boosters to people over the age of 65, thinking that the immunity is waning. But let's look at that. To my mind, and I'm a physician who have seen a lot of patients since last year, Measuring antibody level to see if you are protected after vaccine or disease is an extremely idiotic way of doing it. Why? Because once you get the vaccine, two doses or the disease, you are protected by two ways. We have spoken about it many times. B as in boy cells and T as in Thomas cells. T is the cellular immunity and nobody measures it. So nobody just measures it. When you measure antibody, you have no clue what the T cells are doing. But when you measure the B cell activity, the antibodies, the antibody levels might have gone down. But that still means the T cells are there. Could mean. And the second thing is, think of it as a fulfillment by Amazon of a book. If you write a book, if Dr. Ravi Godse with my Twitter, at Dr. Godse Ravi, if I write a book on COVID, when Amazon distributes that book, Amazon is not going to print 
one million copies of my book and keep it in warehouses everywhere. If they get 100,000 orders, after getting the orders, they will immediately print the book and then ship them out. So they'll have a digital file of my book and soon as they get the order, they will print it. Similarly, the body has a digital file of how to make that antibody. The level may be zero or waning, but body knows how to make antibodies when the time comes. So if you're attacked by COVID, the body will make the antibody. Let's look at another argument that the hospitalizations were increasing in vaccinated population. We knew the cases were happening and no vaccine is 100 percent. But the hospitalizations increasing in vaccinated population, that's a serious thing. Is it really serious though? This could mean that the vaccinations are working. I'm not crazy. Let's just do a simple thinking along exercise, okay? You devise a vaccine that is 90% effective, say. Forget how effective it is. Let's say in vaccinated people is 90% effective to keep you out of the hospital. So you have only 10% chance of going to the hospital. And if you're unvaccinated, you have a 90% chance of going to the hospital and 10% chance of staying out of the hospital. You would say that's a very effective, anybody would say that. So suppose there is a nation or a group of only 100 people, okay? And of those 100 people, 50 are vaccinated and 50 are unvaccinated. So amongst the 50 vaccinated, what is the risk of hospitalization? 10%. So you will see five hospital admissions in the 50 vaccinated people. Amongst 50 unvaccinated people, what is the risk of hospitalization? 90%. So you will see 45 cases in the unvaccinated group and five cases in the vaccinated group. With me so far? Now the vaccination increases and 90% people are now vaccinated. So 90% are vaccinated and 10% are unvaccinated. What is the risk of the unvaccinated people? 90%. So out of 10 people, you're going to see 9 cases. What is the risk of the vaccinated people? 10% of hospitalization. So out of 90 vaccinated people, if you take 10%, you're going to see 9 cases. So nine cases in the vaccinated group and nine cases in the unvaccinated group. Previously, there were five cases in the vaccinated group and 45 cases in the unvaccinated group. Now there are nine is to nine. So now people are going to put on social media and WhatsApp that there is a significant increase in the rate of hospitalization in vaccinated people. That is because now there are more of vaccinated people most nations had targeted the people at risk who, who are older, who are weaker immunity. If your age increases by 7%, you, 7 years, your risk of getting COVID, serious COVID, increases twofold in, by some studies. So these vulnerable people were the first vaccinated. That's why we are seeing some hospitalizations in there. So I'm saying that this is actually a success, that success story of the vaccine. Vaccines are working. They are keeping you out of the hospital. If you're watching this in India, don't worry about boosters. Just I'm sending tweet after tweet on this. At Dr. Godse Ravi 1. Thank you.